This video is not really going to be for this commenter necessarily as much as it's going to be for the people that are getting comments like this. So if you're like me and you're getting a lot of comments like that from liberals and Democrats and Blue MAGA, definitely watch this video until the end. You can put it at 1.5 or 2 times speed. But I want to show this video with you that really impacted me. I just want you guys to remember that there's going to be a lot of people like this that are gonna call you names, that are gonna slander you, that are gonna attack you because you don't wanna vote for the administration carrying out genocide with no plan at all to stop it, only to escalate it. You'll hear a lot of, why do you think you're morally superior? I never said I was, Katie. Why do you feel the need to keep saying that to people? What people really mean when they yell at you and say that and say that you're trying to be superior, it's not because you're trying to be superior. It's because somewhere deep down, they're uncomfortable with their decision and their support of what's happening. And they don't wanna deal with anyone or anything that might hold a mirror up to them. Now to the video I said I wanted to share with you guys that really affected me. Watch the entire thing, it is worth it. Trump is gonna be worse than Biden. Let's measure it. What do you mean relative to what happened to the Palestinians? Tell me what is so terrifying that you are willing to forgive the genocide in Gaza. Tell me what scares you so much that you are willing to step over Sidra's lifeless corpse with the legs blown off and say, excuse me, sorry, that you will step over Hind Rajab's cold corpse that was shot at 360 times by the Israelis while she sat in the car waiting for an ambulance that was blown by Israeli tank. That you step over Hind Rajab's body, sorry, Hind. That you would step over Reem's body. Tell me what's so terrifying. You step over Reem. Aruh, Aruh, spirit of my spirit. That you step over the child you can't identify, this child, the head's blown off. You step over them. You step over those 240,000 corpses to get to that ballot box. You step over all of them. You walk by the Palestinian refugees walking by. Where are you going? I'm going to the ballot box. Voting for who? You're too ashamed of to say it at that time. You walk to the ballot box. You walk over those bodies. Piles and piles of those bodies. Drenched in the blood. You see those kids in those images of the hospitals. Crushed by the rubble. Their arms are hanging. Blood dripping for no other crime than some random people from the West. Said, the land of Israel has been the homeland of the Jewish people. It's always been our home. It will always be our home. This land belongs to us. You will walk all over those corpses. Go to the ballot box. Vote for the one who did it to them, Jadal. Vote for the one who slaughtered them! Vote for the one who massacred them! Vote for the one who continued to lend every impunity to them! Vote for the one who broke the whole international order! To slaughter those children! To slaughter our brothers and sisters! To commit the most brutal genocide! You will cross all of those corpses to the white box! You will put a cross next to the name of Harris, the one who committed the genocide with Biden! Let me be very clear. I am unequivocal and, and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and its ability to defend itself. And that's not going to change. And you will yell to those spirits and say, I did it for you. You will look at them in the eye and say, I voted this for you. You will say that I voted for the one who killed you. I voted for the one who gave the bombs to slaughter you. More bombs than Dresden. More bombs than Hiroshima. More bombs than Nagasaki. More bombs than World War II. I voted for the one who gave unfettered access to all those weapons. I voted for the one who sent the Marines to help kill you. And you would dare to look me in the eye and say you did it for Palestine. You did it for them. The nerve of this shit arrogant solid. It's not for Palestine. It's for your comfort. It's for your status quo. It's for the luxury that you live. Trump is not going to blow up your limbs. You're not going to have a limb amputated in the next four years because there's no anesthesia. You survived four years of Trump. You can survive again. 240,000 Palestinians did not survive. Four years of Biden. You survived Trump. You survived it. You didn't have your hope taken from you. It wasn't handed to Ben Shapiro. It wasn't given to Ben Walsh. The National Guard didn't ethnically cleanse California of Muslims. They didn't go to the East Coast where it's colder. None of that happened to you in the four years. None of that will happen to you in the next four years. What are you so scared of? That you will go to the ballot box and say, I'm voting for the genociders. Why would you rescue Zionism? Why would you rescue Zionism when it's buckling? Why would you restore their invincibility when it's breaking? Why would you go to the ballot box and say, Zionism, let me prove to the world that even if they support the genocide, they can still win because no one betrays Zionism. Why would you have the chance to break the two-party system? You go and rescue Zionism. Why would you have the chance to finally let people lose because they supported Zionism? Why would you go and help Zionism prove that 99 races run, 99 races won? Yay, yay. Let there be justice in the world. You will not struggle like the Palestinians. You will not suffer anything like them. Yes, see, if you don't send a ship to the American come to London. London is nice once you get used to the weather. But do not say you're doing it for Palestine. Don't say you're doing it for Palestine. Be honest and say you're doing it for yourself because you don't want to be a people of struggle. 
because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the reason he was so successful was because he continued to persevere through the struggle. He was offered the dunya, he said, I will not give up justice. He was offered the comforts, he said, I will not give up justice. But we're telling our kids that you are not successful until you have the home and the Tesla. <laughs> It was reported multiple times before Nasrallah's assassination that he refused to do any deal that did not include Palestine. He made clear that Hezbollah would not stop until the Israeli regime stopped bombarding Gaza. He stood with them till the end.